Right now, we're going to walk you through 100,000 square feet of the boot making process. So come on in. We're going to start at our leather room. I'm going to go quick. All right, as you can see right above me, you're going to see some of the leathers that we're building boots out of today. You've got alligator, you've got crocodile, you've got stingray, you've got lizard, you've got ostrich, you've got snake. Anything that you can think of that it's legal to make boots out of, we'll build you, build you a pair of boots out of them. So take a look. Let's pan through here. We've got all these different skins, just like you and I have different fingerprints, so does each individual skin. So you got to match them up to make sure they're as close to perfect as possible. We got Mad Dog, we got smooth leathers up here, we have goat, we have, we've got goat, we've got calf, we've got kangaroo, we've got all sorts of colors of any different variation of smooth leathers you've got. Once the leather is selected for an order, once a pair is put together, they come out here to our clicking department. And these are where all of our skilled craftsmen click out individual leathers. Come on in and take a closer look. What they're going to do, you got to remember that each animal has a line of symmetry. So in order to make the boots look as close to perfect as possible, they've got to cut from the exact same side of the animal off this line of symmetry. It makes for a perfect pair of Lucchese boots. All right, so once all the parts and pieces are cut, there's a couple things that might happen. The boot might have a stitch design on it. If it has a stitch design on it, it's going to go into our ACS room. Come on, and I'll show you that right now. Take a close look here. Here's a good example. Right now, we're stitching this collar pattern here. This machine runs about 1,800 stitches per minute. This is one of about 20,000 different designs that we have on file. Keep in mind, if you can think of a design, we, chances are we can stitch it. Here's one over here that's doing an old, traditional classic stitch by stitch. Way back when they had someone actually sewing in and out of that leather. Here's another example. As you can, just as many patterns we have, we have just as many colors of threads to produce it with. Alright, so now what we're going to do is what we have the toe bug and medallions. This is the vamp. This is the bottom or the foot. So what happens is these are not only functional but they're aesthetic. So if you look closely, that's going to resemble somewhat of a dragonfly. So that's where we get the toe bug and the wrinkle name. So this will allow that leather to bend in the appropriate spot. Without it, it might not do that. Okay, so it looks like it's going to drop. You can see a little closer there. Zoom in there once or twice. Alright, now, if the boot has no stitch design on the quarter, then what we go into is what's called a corded pattern. And let's see if somebody's building that right now. I think they might be. You got to stay close. Depending on the process, there could be over 120 steps in the entire process. We've got over here, I'll show you some corded patterns. Here's a good example of it right here. So here's a, here's a corded pattern. He just happens to do, he's going to overlay this pattern on here and he's going to cord is going to go on top of the outer leather here. Once that happens, you can see all these are all hand corded right here. Once that happens, the lining leather is going to go on top of it. It's going to get smushed and then this detail is going to be stitched around it. So before that happens, Vincent, what Vincent's doing is he's hand piping the entire top quarter of the scallop. So as you can see here, it's all hand done. Okay, all top grain, 100% grain leather. Here's another example of a corded pattern here. This happens to be called the Sam Swirl. So every single quarter is hand piped at the top, no matter what. If you look around, you got two or three people that are doing the same operations. Once that top piping is on and the stitching is on, then what we'll do is we'll actually line the front quarter, okay? So what's happening here is you got to remember that in the construction process, everything is glued first and then reinforced with stitching later. So that lining leather is applied. Now if we walk down this way, this is where they'll actually stitch the lining leather that just was glued in the previous process. So not only does that top piping provide an aesthetics, like a crown molding would, but it'll provide strength and security when that's sewn. Now, there's some excess that needs to be cut off, and this is where it happens right here. Every single pair is hand trimmed here to remove any excess leather that's on that top scallop. Okay, so this is where it, 
This is how it looks here. They'll go in and they'll trim it out just a little bit, make sure it looks good. Every pair is done this way. We've got Fred Gibbon and Vanessa right by us here. Fred, like, come on, Fred, with follow me. Come on, Vanessa. Before we pass it, I want to show you a real old and traditional way of building boots. Way back when, the technology wasn't around to cut them in pieces, so they had to have one piece of leather to build a pair of boots. So right here, they're actually stretching this leather to conform to our foot. The animal that this came from doesn't necessarily match the shape of our feet, so this is the way they have to continue to crimp it. They'll loosen it, they'll crimp it, they'll loosen it, and they'll crimp it until it takes this shape. Real traditional way of building boots. All right, let's go. So once all the parts and pieces are together, is what we call a staging area. And in this staging area, it's gonna tell us a couple of things. It's gonna let us know the lot number, it's gonna tell us the size, it's gonna give us the exact skin the pair of boots are being made of. So this is, allows us to make sure that the entire pair is with this order, so nothing gets lost. Once it's staged and we know that all the parts and pieces are together, then we move over to where we start to close the boot. Before we pass up, you can see here's some ear pull operation. So all of our ear pulls are put together this exact same way. If you look behind, you can see some of the scrap leather that was used from the cutting department that we build our ear pulls out of today. Let's go see what Eno's doing real quick. Eno, what are you guys doing today? You guys are putting together some plugs here on a Diego inlay, is that right? Yes. All right, and you're doing lining leathers, right? Yes, sir. So as you can see, some of the processes are repeated throughout the plant. Thanks, girls. Over here to our left, we've got our fancy stitchers. This happens to be what we call our Diego inlay. So again, just as a reminder, everything is glued first and then stitched. This gentleman will go ahead and stitch around the Diego inlay and he's ready to go. He's off. You can see here some ear pull operation that's happening. So once that's done, there's a pretty important part that happens with our heel counters. And you can see it happens right here. So this, this heel counter is, is critical to the way a Lucchese boot fits. Every single one of our boots has a leather heel counter. The foxing is going to go on next, and then we're actually going to start to close the boot from one half. As you can see here, this is one end of the boot that's already been attached. If you look closely, you can see this side welt here. If I open it up, you're going to see it on the inside. This is going to give the boot the support and strength that it needs when it's closed together. All of our boots are built inside out. This is the way the boot looks once it's fully closed. If I try to pull this apart, Chances are it's not going to happen because we've got that full leather side welt in there. Now our boots are up four times. Twice before and twice after we turn them. Here's an example of how he's rubbing, rubbing them twice before they're turned. This is going to make sure that that side seam is as flat as possible so there's no scratching that goes on your leg. Once he rubs that, this is where the boots are actually turned. So once the boots are turned, this is how they look. So it's a hydraulic press, it just sucks that boot right out. Way back when, there was a big wooden crank that they would turn and turn and turn, but ultimately this is where you have the raw boot. Now we're ready to last it. Come on and follow me. We should probably give you guys a sneak peek of what our insoles look like first. So we'll do that. We'll just sort of take a peek on where all of our, our uh, outsole leathers and our insoles are cut from the same leather. Here we have a skiving process of our leather heel counters. Let me show you how they start. This is the thickness of how they start. And this is how they end up. Okay, real critical to fit. Those leather heel counters are cut from this leather here. As you can see, you might still have some leftover branding from the cattle that it's come from. Right over my shoulder, 
This is the way he cuts his heel counters. 